Hey guys, it's Darwin, here today to do another video talking about different types of sleeping pads on the different types of trails and what's worked best for me. So there's a lot of different types of sleeping pads out there. Um, I just kind of wanted to make a video today talking about the different types on different types of trails and what I've used throughout my hiking career and what I'm currently using. So in 2015 when Snuggles and I set out to do the AT for the first time, the pad that I started with was a Big Agnes Q-Core SL. It was a great pad. It was about three and a half inches thick. It was a fully inflatable pad which means that you have to blow it up at the end of the day but I got great sleep on it. The problem that I had with it is it had a super leaky valve, so I would pump it up whenever I got to camp, and throughout the night while I was sleeping, it would slowly lose air, and I'd wake up on the ground. After switching that pad out a couple times and getting replacements for it, finally I decided to ditch it and go with the pad that I'm currently using and what I used in 2016 on the Appalachian Trail, and that is the Thermarest Neo Air x Lite. Super popular pad, you'll see these a lot on the trail. This pad weighs in at 16 ounces for a large, and it is a three inch thick pad. Um, I really, really love this thing. It packs down really tiny, and it's super comfortable um, throughout the night, especially if you're a side sleeper. So I am a side sleeper, and like I said, it gives you about three inches thick of pad. And as you can see, it packs down pretty small, gets pretty slender. The reason some people don't want to go with a pad like this is at the end of a long day of hiking, they don't want to have to sit there and blow it up. I never really had that big of a problem. Sometimes it was kind of a pain, but most of the time I was willing to do it to get that extra comfort at night. The other thing that people don't really like about this pad and what you should keep in mind if you do decide to go with a pad like this is it's very loud. Especially when it's fully blown up, it kind of sounds crinkly and crunchy. So if you're sleeping in a shelter at night and you're on a wood floor and you toss and turn a lot, it's gonna make a lot of noise. Some people get kind of annoyed with that, so definitely keep that in mind. Now another type of pad that you can go with is something like a closed cell foam pad. Uh, this is the pad that Snuggles used for her 2015 and 2016 hike. This is the Thermarest Z-Lite SOL pad. Uh, this guy weighs in at 15 ounces, is about an inch thick, and it's super easy to roll out when you get to camp. So the good thing about a pad like this is you can just kind of throw it out. Um, some of the downfalls of a pad like this are, number one, you can see it's kind of big and it doesn't break down any smaller than that. Snuggles actually had to kind of fold hers out like this and then strap it to the back of her pack. Um, some people carry it on the bottom of their pack, some people carry it on the top of their pack, but it doesn't get down and packed down as small as something like a Thermarest. So definitely keep that in mind. The other thing is if you are a side sleeper like I am, it's only about an inch thick. So it's definitely a pad that's better for people that lay on their side. Um, the other good thing about a pad like this, and is actually while well, I'll be using it for about 700 miles on my PCT through hike, is whenever you're hiking in the desert, there's a lot of thorns from cactuses, and there's also something called a goat head. If you don't know what a goat head is, Definitely look that up. They are the devil, especially when it comes to riding a bike or camping in the backcountry in the desert. Um, so inflatable pads like my Thermarest definitely get popped easy because of thorns and stuff. So using something like a closed cell foam pad is definitely a better option. So in 2018, when I hike the PCT, I'll be using one of these for the first 700 miles and then when I get to Kennedy Meadows, I'll be switching over to my fully inflatable pad to get better sleep throughout the rest of the trail. Now the third type of pad that you can use and what I started using when I first started backpacking is what's called a self-inflating pad. Um, it's very similar to a fully inflatable pad. However, inside of it, it actually has foam. So the whole idea is whenever you open the valve to it, it sucks air in and lets that foam blow it up. Now this is a Nemo Aura 25 liter ultralight pad. It comes in at 33.4 ounces and again is a self inflating. Now usually anytime I've ever had one of these, 
even if you let it sit for a couple hours and suck all the air in, you still need to blow in the valve a little bit to get it a little bit thicker. Um, this guy is only one and a half inch thick, so not much thicker than the closed cell foam pad, um, and definitely not as thick as the fully inflatable pad. And as you can see, it is a little bit bigger, a little bit bulkier, which is kind of why I switched off of these. They are great because um, if you're hiking in the desert, you don't have to worry about something um, puncturing it and it deflating. Um, it's also not loud and crunchy like the Thermarest Neo Air, but again, it is bigger, it's bulkier, it's heavier. And one thing that I did see people using one of these on a trail like the Appalachian Trail is that they had it on the outside of their pack and it rained, that foam actually collects water and it becomes much heavier and it's super hard to dry out. So something to think about if you're hiking on the East Coast or something, a pad like this, if it does get wet, it will absorb a lot of water and it will take a while to dry out. So definitely keep that in mind. All right guys, so hopefully this video helped you kind of see the different types of pads for the different types of trails and what you can use. Uh, what are you currently using? Leave me a comment in the comment box below and tell me where you're currently rocking on the trail. Uh, maybe there's something out there that I don't know about yet that I should definitely check out. If you haven't got a chance yet, go over and check me out on Instagram. I post a lot of new photos throughout the week of some of the things that Snuggles and I have going on and previews of videos that I'll be releasing every Thursday. Go ahead and like or dislike this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.